No fear. He was going to die somehow, someday, so that cannot be the deciding factor. He had survived thus far, and suicide was not an option. Remember that, he thought. Now, do it now. Go. Green light this thing. The time has come. Go after her. Go find her. You are now clean, repentant. Love will guide you, and in love there is no fear. He looked back at the lighthouse, where he thought he saw it, and yes, there were burn marks there. The evidence of it was all over the sides. He glanced again at the beautiful island, the cave, cottage, by the boat build dock, the wheat and barley fields, the dried up grapevines, the gravesite, and the wind seemed to whisper, look ahead, you are not expected to complete the task, neither are you permitted to put it down. He breathed deep, and the island seemed to smell unbelievably sweet, an aroma that he had never smelled all the time living there, and it was intense. Baked bread, mixed wine, beef barbecue over flames, grilled like at a Greek festival. Then the smell of sensual woman's perfume wafted through the festival atmosphere. His whole being sighed with that feeling of wanting to drop to one's knees in regret and longing. That deep groan of heartache and heartbreak mixed with years and tears of trying to just put it all down and forget it. But it was rich. His heart beat thick like honey. At once he felt like climbing up the lighthouse and yelling, I love you, Jesus, I love you. Chapter seven, the dream. The memories of the dream that instigated it all flooded him. Many things were forgotten through the years, but not that dream. And here, right after waking to the sober nightmare of reality, the sighting of the sea monster, was it a vision, a dream? Was it real? No, it couldn't be real. He saw it again. The mirror in front of the room, the journaling, the whole account written down, the amazing signs, the music, the coffee cup, the large yellow softball, the painting, sting, fields of gold, the devastating campfire revelation, the burn barrel. Then he shook himself to focus on the task at hand. Enough, it's time to go. Direction, his mind steady, his loins girded, his checklist checked and double checked. He pulled up the anchor and pushed off. The wind calmly carried him out. And as the island slowly pushed back, he had pangs of, I forgot this or that. Then he just shook his head and said quietly to himself, it is what it is. I've done all I can do to prepare. So I have to do what I gotta do. If a man would learn to pray, let him go to sea. That thought crossed his mind as he looked towards the horizon. It was amazing how fast 20 years on that refuge of an island went by. All along while he was there, it seemed an eternity. Time seems a physical event slash emotion. So here's to faith. Here's to a leap of faith, direction. He had no idea where he was. Well, he had some idea. The people who sporadically showed up needing their own directions said he was near the beaches of the Outer Banks in North Carolina. But this place seemed way too tropical for that landscape. So he thought he had made that up as he quote, remembered that. But as the years passed, he cared less and less and so at some point just chose not to remember. He had his compass and astrolabe, a map of the stars, and a few old tattered road trip road maps of the states the old couple kept in their book of memories, but that was it. 
He didn't even know where to begin his search for her. He thought he knew the way. He thought he had the truth of where she had gone. But the only way he knew to find her was going to be through faith. Faith. All his education got him was in debt. It made him an intelligent dumbass, he always said as he glanced at his student loan debts. Faith. He'd already made money and lost it all, so that wouldn't work. His friends had all deserted him right after the shotgun wedding, and his own family just vanished. He was alone, and God made him alone, he pondered. And the one thing that kept him all the years was a relationship he developed on the island with the spirit. Not a spirit, but the spirit. Some Indians of old knew it, the great father. He has all kinds of names, but no, he wouldn't go into it because it got so complicated and confusing, denominational wise, so he just kept it simple. I need help here. I need someone to save me from this dark hell, and someone did. The spirit he befriended simply walked beside him and inside of him somehow and guided him and he trusted it. It was that simple. When he would rage or lust, it was hard to hear the spirit's voice. But when he calmed down and got a hold of himself and or took a cold shower when necessary, there it would be. Where am I going? Most of the time there was no answer, period. See, he would just go forward and always forward like General Grant, he thought. On the ocean, at some point, there really was no way of turning around. He didn't know where he was after a few days. Where am I going? He looked at the maps, at the compass, but what did it all mean? Nothing, because by faith, truth, and honesty, he was really just floating and trusting that wherever that wind was coming from, wherever it began to blow from, and whatever was the cause of its blowing was of the spirit. And as unnerving as that was, there was no other choice. At night, a physical fear would terrorize him. Nightmares would threaten him, poke him, stab him. Fear of the delirium tremens, muscle twitches, the charley horses, but a light shone in the far distance that helped the sleeplessness. I know that sounds cliche again, but here it was comfort. Is that the lighthouse? Now I'm too far away. Jeez, where am I? Oh man, am I floating in circles? A little red light on a tower blinking softly on what to be appeared to be a mountaintop. He remembered the very room, the very window, all the clues he documented, savored and cherished, answer to the mystery he sung. This is a long, lonely ocean tale. Waves crashed, things broke. He ran out of food, the whole nine, but the boat held. Fresh water remained in his canteen. The book, how we met and married got lost one night in a storm and washed overboard. Here, panic shot through him. All books were lost, save the good book. That one remained. And all he had to read now was Job 41 and Song of Songs. All the other pages were washed out by the seawater. These pages had wax spilled all over them, so it must have been some sort of natural preservative somehow. Faith, boredom, noises under the boat, that smell, the heat, the freaky underwater roar, the scales tapping under the boat, or was it inside of him? The oppressive, desolate, airless humidity, the size of this thing was indescribable, but one really never saw it completely, one sensed it more than physically saw it the hidden hand. He drifted in and out of sleep. Too tired to care anymore. Come meet me already. A lifetime of it. I'm sick of it, invisible foe. 
tears. I cannot defeat you. The Lord rebuke you. Tears. Weeping. Tears in the red bandana. It had collected a million of them, that red bandana. He blew them up as a kiss, an invisible vapor slash smoke to heaven. Deposits for the heavenly vial. Those were the deposits. Tears. Not good works, but tears. Salt water tears. Tears as the evidence of battle. All washed away now, no evidence remained. A delicate fade. A delicate fade. And then nothing. Thanks for nothing. For time, that was the prayer he prayed the most after all the years of failure, heartache, disappointments, and disillusionment. Joyless moments. Even surrounded by friends and family as they never really fulfilled the void. After that lingering, weak rebuke of the monster, nothing. The spirit, through faith, now more than ever said, stay the course. The ship's captain wheel he was working so hard on with that amazing story broke off during one of the rogue waves and tore through the cabin, making a wreck loose of the wooden boat pieces. Now those words were just floating in his mind, a memory he held on to like a whisper. And eventually, even those words of encouragement vanished like a vapor. Tired, out of wind, nearly out of oil for the lamp, dimly glowing in the dark. His direction now was by faith, and literally, not allegorically, by faith. The longer he sailed and woke to no answers, the more he just hoped to one day not wake. He was too old for this, too tired, too broken. He had to intentionally not think about it, because all the old ways of despair thinking were way too easy to access. Even tired of running down those thought patterns, thinking about not thinking. Watch and pray, he whispered. Brain dead, brain spent, thinking, plotting, planning, crying, organizing, Researching, reading, praying, writing, playing, tuning, eating, repairing, cleaning, desiring, singing, asking, dreaming, praying, plotting, planning, organizing, Researching, reading, praying, crying, crying, tears, writing, playing, tuning, eating, despairing, depressed down to the gates of hell, repairing, cleaning, crafting, singing, asking, Dreaming, singing. Sea monster. <laughs>